everyone. So I wanted to show the area that I'm staying in in Kiev. So I'm a, just to remind everyone, I'm a math professor and I'm visiting um, uh, Kiev to work with my co-author, Roman Nikiforov. Yep. And we have a project on essentially non-normal numbers that's been going on for many years. And Roman here is a researcher at the National Dragomanov Pedagogical University. And right now I'm in this absolutely crazy apartment, decorated by babushka, guarded by babushka. Also the building is guarded by cats. And I wanted to show everyone sort of, if you come to this university as a professor, what to expect. And this is gonna be, <laughs> I love it, really. I, I really, really love this place. I request it. I could stay in the center if I wanted to. There was actually a little bit of a danger because there was a light here last night and literally at 3.15 a.m. the thing came crashing down and exploded in glass. And when I came to investigate it, I kind of cut my foot and was bleeding everywhere. So the thing is, this is actually not the first time that I've had falling glass attack me on a math trip. When I was in the Czech Republic in January, I also had some glass just crash down and cut my foot up and I still have a scar from it. So it's not just in Ukraine, it can also happen other places as well. Um, so the stove, uh, the top of it works, the oven doesn't, but that's good enough. And um, we have plants, the babushkas take care of the plants. And we're gonna go outside and I'm gonna show everyone around. And with any luck, there's a cat, like I said, that guards the apartment building. And hopefully we can meet this cat. It's a super, super friendly cat and she recognizes me every time from my previous visits. Max remembers me. Or Maxushka. <laughs> so this is the building that I'm staying in. And I don't even know how many floors it is, but this is the hood. There's some sort of area over there. Um, often we have lots of cats and things now. Um, this is something that's a little weird to me. So um, this is new since last time, but we now have a beach here. You know, we're not like on the sea or on the river or anything, but we have this lake. And um, this was pretty recently constructed. Let's go down and check this out. There doesn't seem to be anyone here at the moment on the beach, but um, when I was here, I'll, I'll cut to a little clip of this I got from a couple days ago. Um, every evening, there's some guy that comes here and he's fishing and there's literally four cats sticking around him and he feeds these cats fish whenever he catches it. I think it's uh, four cats right now. And every time he catches a fish, he just throws it to the cats. The cats, all four of them just go and jump and one of them walks off with it. The water is kind of scummy. Like um, you really don't want to swim in this. So I'm not exactly sure like Roman, what do you think they actually made this for? Like, yes, for, for sitting and also it was a, uh, like a uh, garbage place. Now it's all beautiful. Like. Yeah. It's something kind of unique. Like I haven't really seen something kind of like this before in one of the residential areas. And you see, you definitely don't want to swim here. I think they have like a no swimming sign. And we can see, I don't know if it's clear in the video, the water is a little scummy, but people are, you know, fishing there. I've even seen some kind of little um, impromptu discos um, over there because the clubs are, I guess, sort of closed. And I only really say sort of closed because I think like karaoke and some other places, people are still dancing and all that. And as nice as the beach is, I just wanted to kind of show this with all the trash, the benches missing. Um, I want to show, you know, really a balanced view of everything. And this is one thing, uh, maybe I'll point this out some other times too. Look at this, at uh, buried beneath. So when you see something like this um, around here, what it basically means is, I think you send a message to that on uh, that uh, screen name on Telegram and you buy drugs and then they bury it somewhere and there's some way that money is exchanged. So this is all throughout the city. I don't recommend anyone do this, but that's just an explanation of what that graffiti means. Yeah, so, uh, and also you can see sometimes a guy who trying to find something 
uh, in different places like uh, Venice is uh, I don't know in, in some different places like in grass or maybe um, he has a trash so, so he's uh, like digging holes or something yeah they try to find this um, tracks from these telegram canals that you saw before so we are um, looking around the neighborhood and I love this bench right here <laughs> so I don't know um, I'm not really sure what the explanation for this is, <laughs> but we have a sideways trash can. It's kind of like a cannon. I guess it maybe shoot trash. You, um, and what's really nice over here, this is a very common thing in Ukraine, that we have a lot of just workout equipment for our, our playgrounds. So this is also in Poland a good amount, but even more in Ukraine. So, I mean, some of this I don't think is anything that great, but it's like, for example, pull-up bar is pretty wonderful. Like and yeah it's my favorite oh yeah this one is yeah it's fun yeah <laughs> you can probably do that for an hour and not get bored can you do the pull-up bar yeah yeah any grip See? Whoever said that math professors aren't strong? <laughs> <laughs> so I understand that basically almost all these buildings at least are for undergraduate students of the National Dragomanov Pedagogical University. But there's still babushkas and things walking around. So like, do they live in these dorms or what's the... Maybe they work here. Yeah. yeah, you sometimes have them working here like guarding, so... Yeah. You know, you... Honestly, I think a dorm room guarded by babushka is far more dangerous to try to invade than a dorm room guarded by lions. So the babushka knows what's going on. You don't want to mess with her. This is something I wanted to point out too that's pretty common, that in these parking lots you'll often see just there's some car and it has a flat tire and this one it looks like it hasn't been abandoned necessarily that long, but like all the tags are up through 2009. So. I prefer if it was some Soviet kind of looking car. Like, what is that? I can't even tell. It's kind of scratched off. You know? Opel. Opel? Okay. So it's not a car you would see in the U.S., but like really you can sometimes see things like Volgas or whatever, which just totally rusted out and probably abandoned 20 years ago in some of these parking lots. So it's a really good treasure hunt to look for these sorts of things. Do you enjoy this? Do you yeah. enjoy that sort of treasure hunt? One. Okay, yeah, yeah, so it's good that we got this on one take because just right over here, here's another one, but the tires maybe haven't been flat quite as long. I'm kind of thinking that um, abandoned cars in Ukraine are like abandoned buildings in Detroit. So this building here is one for the Music Academy and I can kind of hear some people playing some songs from it. It's next to this church over here. So I think this is a little interesting. I mentioned just a little while ago that there are all these instructions and um, ways to buy drugs on Telegram. And right next to all this, we have, this is actually a court, court of law of some sort. Um, and over there's even a police station. So there's just, you know, everything all together. Um, and then right there, there's, a, I guess, a maybe semi-famous brewery. This is for um, Obolone beer. And you can kind of smell the, the beer uh, smell sometimes like bread or something like that. So one thing you'll see a lot in some of these um, residential areas in Ukraine are just uh, rows of tires. And Roman, you were saying that this is kind of sort of a 90s version of that fence over there to keep cars from parking there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, it's rare now, but it was quite popular 10 years, 20 years ago. As also uh, construct uh, um, a play garden for kids uh, with um, construction and uh, creatures painted in different colors just for like like naive art so this is this uh, dorm for the music academy again and honestly when I first saw this I thought it was an abandoned building and like especially look over here like 
it almost looks in some ways like a prison with like those bars there. Uh, yeah, these bars, it's uh, not just prison, it's um, because dorm is closed at 11 and uh, if and you can't come in or come out after that and if you want you can climb at so it's just a uh, third floor but typically it can be five or six floors barred from from the um, earth to so you just need to climb and it's typical for for ukraine and are people drunk when they're climbing five floors or not? Typically, yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that I really, really like about Kiev or Ukraine in general is there are some just crazily named things that um, have some wonderful English. And one of my favorites is coming up. This is in the area that we're staying and maybe a non-native speaker might not understand this as well. So I'll explain it. So here's a coffee shop and the name, Enjoy the Wood. Okay, so just everyone saw that, it says Enjoy the Wood. Um, what is wood? Wood is a part of a man, and he's excited maybe by a woman he likes, or maybe if his preference is you know, a little different, a, a, a man he likes. And sometimes wood is very hard in the morning, it's called morning wood. And here, you can enjoy the wood. Just wanted to show this gigantic apartment building. It's nine floors. Of course, this is a you know Soviet constructed apartment building, and you know something that's I mean just really different than we might be used to is look at all the chaos in terms of like all the modifications outside. Of course, this one here looks totally different. There's people hanging clothes outside that one. Um, you know these two are constructed in a different sort of way, and it's to get a little bit more space to do something with. Is that right? Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 So this just goes on for like a long time and like in some other parts of town I've seen some apartment buildings that are just like little cities almost like I think there can even be some thousands of people. So just to see we have this Soviet car over here and this is I guess it's the Lada but it's the domestic version. Zhiguli? What's it called? Zhiguli, yes. Zhiguli, okay. So this is something I'd never seen one of these in the U.S. before. That, it's tires. I mean, it's still running. It looks like the tires are, are, are there still. So, and just to show everyone how common these things are, uh, you know, more of these things for Telegram. You know, these are just really everywhere. And also, a wonderful thing we can have um, Babushka selling fruits. It's September now, so this is a little less common than if you see in the summer. There's just just tons everywhere, and once again, more, more you workout playground equipment. And what's interesting here too is that this is in the Ukrainian flag colors. So not only that is in Ukrainian flag colors, but also the playground there for little kids is in Ukrainian flag colors. I also just wanted to point out this fence as well, which is not really completely continuous, but this is also in the Ukrainian flag colors. And Roman was saying this was uh, most commonly done in 2014 and 2015 after the conflict with Russia started. So this is a school right here. So here we have a field right next to the school. So maybe that's where students play soccer, something like that. A couple people are having a sword fight right now. So here you can do some dips. It's not perfectly straight, but... So one thing I think Ukraine, you know, this is a little bit ahead of the curve, like this outdoor workout equipment. Like here we have the babushka getting her swole on, um, hitting some bench press. And I wouldn't really see that in the US at the same time. Like we're starting to get some outdoor workout stuff as far as I know, but this has been around like this type of stuff. You can see this isn't new. This has been here a really long time. We're now in the area near Metro Minska, and there's a little market here. We're gonna go back towards Obolon, which is closer to where I'm staying. 
So around some of these metro stations, there can be some sort of markets sometimes. And this is, um, it's very different in the markets more in the center versus the mar markets on the outskirts. And here you're gonna find more things like, you know, babushka selling fruits, um, strange clothing being sold for some sort of discount and just sort of kind of more general chaos. And I mean, this is the area generally we're looking at right here and I'll show you where the market is. And this is Metro Minska. We're gonna to head to Metro Obolone next. I always thought that this thing was a little bit funny too. Like the, is that what a traditional Ukrainian woman are like? Yeah. It is. <laughs> and I love also the guy and he has the corn thing out there. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it's a, like uh, vodka. It's a what? In a bottle. Vodka. Corn, and, oh, it's like vodka, I see. Yeah, yeah it's symbolism I didn't realize, so. So this is um, sort of a smaller market. It's not as big as like things like the Troy Ishchina market or like yeah, the yeah, Barabashova market in uh, Kharkiv. Yes. It's just um, small near the <clears throat> metro station. So. And you can buy all kinds of things at these markets. So, uh, so this can be absolutely wonderful. And this can be better than going to the supermarket sometimes that like, you know, just look at all this, just like variety of fruits and vegetables. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. So this is something you'll see a lot around town. So this is uh, confiscat. So like to confiscate, to take. And what could this store possibly be that's named confiscate? And it's a shoe store of all things. So here we will have one of the universal symbols in graffiti. So Gigio has not only one penis in his head, but another one pointing at his mouth. <laughs> so we're now approaching a little bit of a kiosk city by uh, Metro Obolone. And the locals hate these, is my understanding. I absolutely love this stuff. Um, so if you want to get like a manicure or pedicure or laser epilation at three in the morning, you know, you can find some sort of place to do this. You can get a haircut at four in the morning, maybe a little discount or something. And I want to show with first crazy place we're seeing. Um, so <laughs> look at how offensive and ridiculous this place is. It has this like mouth screaming and open. Um, of course, there is graffiti once again, telling you how to buy, how to buy drugs and telegram. And you can look at this place and I came in here once at I think two or three in the morning because I was walking home and I saw this like crazy thing on the side and I just wanted to see like, okay, what is this place like? This is the strange place like at this time. And the guy had like no sense of humor or understanding that I just came in because I saw this weird thing on the side. Um, so if you want any, God knows what, at, I don't know, five in the morning, you can get it here uh, near Metro Oblong. So another really funny thing that I love in these kiosks is just the blatant copyright infringement. And I'm gonna show some of this in some of my future videos. And Disney lawyers, you can kind of be, um, maybe send me the finder's fee. Look at this. Uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I say there's about maybe like one one thousandth of a percent of a chance that they actually got permission to do that. So um, Disney lawyers, if you wanna, I don't make like five dollars suing this place. You can um, you can do that. And now this is what I find like really, 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 really funny. Uh, and this is where like honestly in like in Ukraine, it's really, really important when you're in one of these sort of weird metro stations that you have an eye for detail. Because if we look at this, and we don't think anything, but then we look and we see this name. Let's zoom in on that. Fishing hub. Hmm. I wonder what that reminds me of. Check a porn hop, check a good stop, check a skateboard. Unfortunately, this place is um, closed right now. Um, I think we're gonna go in and ask them if like you can get like a free DVD or lubricant or something like that. But this is what's actually really funny because we have this like Disney thing over here and we have, you know, fishing hub over here. And Roman was just telling me that like the reason that they do something like this is, you know, you have something for kids, you know, you can do this Disney thing over here. And then, you know, if you want to go in here, 
and get, um, I don't know, some fishing equipment and like a DVD or something. That's something for dad. I'm in Vizhorsk now. It's a small city near Kiev. And we also have our version of Pornhub. It's a techno hub. Yeah. One of the things that I love about um, some of these places is just the ridiculous architecture. So look, we have this thing with this camels with the globe on their shoulder. And then look at the architecture of this place as well. Like I think it used to be a place there were some things for some kids and now it's like there are some shops and it's like there's a, a, a bar, some porter pub. Last thing in this area before we go somewhere else, I wanted to show black coffee. And I'm gonna leave this to everyone else's judgment what to think about this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really even sure what to say. Of course, it's very important to be able to go to the gym. And so, you know, I'm staying in this part of Oblon and where I've been going just for kind of single use passes. He had this uh, kind of cutesy name like gym for you. So, you know, it's, it's basic gym, everything more or less there for a trip you know, that I need is there. Um, they're not gonna have any like specialized powerlifting equipment or, any, or anything like that. They do have some tires to flip, which is nice. So I finished my workout. Um, one thing that I think is really important and a lot of people neglect is that when you're going on these long trips, it's really, really important to find a local gym and to pack some gym clothes accordingly. So if I'm going for less than a week, then I might not bring something. But if I'm going to be gone for, you know, more than a week, two weeks, a month, you know, this is no reason to skip the gym. You know, even if you're doing a lot of walking, walking is wonderful. Um, it's really not the same thing. It can be hard to find. Um, time to go to the gym, of course, but I think really just for health and well-being, it's really a good idea to find some place where you can get like a short-term membership or like just like some daily thing that you pay. And that gym back there, I think it actually doubled in price almost. It was um, 110 hryvnia a year ago for single use, and now it's up to 200. So one of the nice things, at least, is right after this gym, I can, you know, I'm going to be hungry, of course. And there's a grocery store, uh, Echo Market, up ahead. I don't recommend it, but if you want your post-workout meal to be beer, there's plenty of places. We got beer number one over there, some Belfast. Um, I think it's, uh, what's it say? Cafe, pub, so there's, um, generally there's no shortage of ways to find out at all times here that are gonna be open at any hours. This Sabaka seems to be guarding the entrance to the grocery store. Yeah, it's pretty funny, actually. He's probably waiting for his owner. Yeah, this is a funny sabaka. I don't think I've seen this before. I wonder if the owner's in here or not, or what's going on. He seems really, really tame, though. Well, I finished grocery shopping, and the sabaka changed colors, I think. So it looks quite different <laughs> So I wanted to show the area around my uh, apartment where I'm doing laundry, and this is, um, was a little tricky to figure out. You know, all of this is, um, you know, in Ukrainian, and there was kind of some strange system with this, but eventually I got it working. Um, you know, some of this you can kind of figure out, like Mashinka to, so. But definitely I wasn't really able to do it on my own, so I needed some help to do it. Okay, I hope everyone enjoyed my perspective on Obalone, and I'm gonna have more videos showing kind of, you know, maybe my perspective as a American who likes these sorts of details going through different parts of, um, of, of Kiev and also Kharkiv. Um, there'll be several more coming up, so if you're interested, be sure to, you know, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'm posting this from Poznan now, um, so these videos are all gonna be from my backlog. And as you can see, my cat is doing all kinds of funny things on my shoulder. So I think that's pretty much it. And hope to see everyone back in the next video.